Well, it's also been three decades since China resumed nationwide college entrance exams. Many say the move after the Cultural Revolution changed their everyday lives. It's still a pivotal event for today's high school seniors, though they may have different choices and, of course, different hopes. My colleague Wang Wenmang spoke to two generations of students. It's another busy day for Li Siran. His big exam is still six months away, but millions of students like him are already counting the days. With good grades and an award-winning scientific project under his belt, Li is one of the lucky few to get an exemption from the test and automatic entry into top universities. But he wants to sit the exam anyway. It, it actually not only a test for the future. I didn't bear any significance on on my future to that, but actually is.、Um, Kind of challenge, and a kind of treasure of my life. Unlike in the past, when the college entrance exam was the only means to higher education and decent jobs, Li says he and his peers now have other alternatives. As he gets ready for the summer test, he's also applying to Harvard and Yale. He thinks the exam is a good idea, but says it's not perfect. When he gets into the Chinese composition part, he often wonders what he should write to please the judge. Different writers will, maybe according to their preferences or even bias, they may give some subjective evaluation to these students. And we know that in the、uh, college entrance exam, even one even one point it means a lot. Selecting talent through exams goes back to sixth century China. Over the past three decades, reforms have extended to universities, such as enrollment expansion, college mergers, and exam format. But the issues of equal opportunity and fairness still remain, and many are wondering about the specific consequences of reforms and where exactly the road leads to. On May 24, 1977. The late Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping delivered a speech entitled "Respect Knowledge, Respect Talents." In it, he indicated the entrance exam might be reintroduced, which had been stopped a decade before by the Cultural Revolution. Later that winter, more than five million candidates aged between 15 and 36 sat exam. Dai Jiagan was one of them. 当时 I was teaching in a rural high school when we heard about the exam. That was really exciting. I knew I needed more knowledge to teach, so I left my students and went back to school. 当听到这个消息的时候，心情是十分激动。Oh, 起来。He then went on to work in the field of education. Years of experience have made him come to understand the true significance of the move. Personally, I think Deng Xiaoping's idea was based on human development and the care of people. Human beings have the rights to develop, and having access to education is an essential part of it. Over the last three decades, around 36 million students have been admitted to universities, colleges, and vocational and technical schools across China. The enrollment rate has risen from single digit 30 years ago to more than 50 percent. But students all have to find employment after graduation, and Dai believes that's something that must be taken into account with further reforms. The exam should be based more on the needs of society. Knowledge is important, but the ability to learn is more crucial in the long run. The exam should be a comprehensive evaluation of a person. So, to this extent, we cannot select talent according to the results of just one exam. Thirty years on, it's hoped that the entrance exam brings not only college certificates but also improvement of education quality and more choices for the future. Wang Mama, CCTV. And joins at the same time tomorrow. We continue our special coverage of 30 years of reform and opening up. Liu Ming will take a look at changing eating patterns here in China. He'll also explore a booming gourmet industry in some of the country's key cities.